Hi everybody, this is Ms. Kirsch and this is the Advanced Chemistry Pre-Lab Lecture for the Isolation of Caffeine Lab. You should enjoy this lab. Caffeine is the world's most used drug and some anthropologists believe that it dates back to the Stone Age. And I know I certainly enjoy my cup of caffeine or half a pot of caffeine in the morning. Here is your caffeine molecule. It is an organic molecule. It's got your little nitrogen in there. It's got the ring structure. It's found in leaves, beans, nuts, and seeds of several different kinds of plants. Coffee is made from the beans of the Caffea arabica plant. Soft drinks are made from the cola nut. Tea is made from the leaves of Thea sinensis and chocolate is made from the beans of the coca plant. Caffeine is also added to many over-the-counter cold medicines. You can buy uh, stimulants, kind of like pep pills, caffeine pills, stay awake, no dose, those kind of things, and also painkillers. Uh, caffeine is added sometimes to migraine medicine and uh, other things like that. If caffeine is added to a medication, it is regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. If it's found naturally in the coffee, it is not. Caffeine is an alkaloid, which means it is basic. And in its pure form, it has a bitter taste. Quite often, plants that have alkaloids in them have a bitter taste to warn away predators uh, to say, hey, don't eat my leaf because it tastes pretty bad. Uh, most alkaloids are not water soluble and in this case we are going to use an organic solvent to isolate our caffeine. Other alkaloids in plants include nicotine, uh, quinine which is used to fight malaria and even night leg cramps, uh, and the drugs cocaine and morphine. Caffeine uh, stimulates the heart the respiratory system and the nervous system. It acts as a diuretic, which means it removes water from the body and you have to use the restroom, if you know what I mean. Caffeine also stimulates the smooth muscles, but not really directly. What it does is it re releases an amino acid of glutamate and aspartate, which I said incorrectly, sorry, uh, which are neurotransmitters. And then that goes uh, to do the relaxing of the smooth muscles. And that's why quite often it's used in migraine medicine because if your muscles are all tight, the caffeine goes and, and can help relax them. Another thing, interesting thing that caffeine will do, it will actually increase the amount of fatty acids that are used as a fuel in your body. So it increases the amount of circulating fatty acids, which means it basically puts more fuel into the bloodstream. Uh, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to burn them faster. So sometimes they put caffeine in diet pills because they say you lose weight, but it really doesn't. It increases the amount of fatty acids that are in your blood, but it doesn't mean you don't burn them if you don't exercise. So that's kind of one of those things where I think they can get away with a little license as far as I'm concerned. Okay. If you have a five ounce cup of coffee, you can have anywhere from 40 to 150 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, the same size cup of tea can have 75 to 225. And the same size glass of Mountain Dew can have approximately 22 milligrams. Caffeine does not appear from what I've been able to find to be harmful if used in moderation. It can be addictive. Uh, we know we've heard the people say, oh, I've got to have my cup of coffee in the morning. But large doses of the stuff can be poisonous. It can cause restlessness, nervousness, insomnia. Diuresis is the loss of too much water, gastrointestinal disturbances, uh, muscle twitching, rambling thoughts and speech patterns, tachycardia, which is irregular uh, uh, overproduction of heartbeats, or cardiac arrhythmia, which is a funky beat. Periods of inexhaustibility and even psychomotor agitation. It doesn't sound like fun. If you have a severe overdose of caffeine, it can cause delirium, seizures, hyperglycemia, and even death.
Now, you would have to drink 50 to 200 cups of coffee to get the 10 grams of caffeine that you would need, and that would be lethal in 50% of the population, and that's based on body weight. Okay, so if you take a look at this lab, you will see that I have done a major revision. So if you want to pause the video, the title is Caffeine Isolation Lab. You can write in the date, and the purpose of this experiment is to isolate caffeine from different sources from water to propanol, which is an organic solvent, and then we're going to evaporate the propanol and recrystallize the caffeine crystals. Okay, for materials, we're going to be using the standard Erlenmeyer flask, Bunsen burners, funnels, hot plates, pipettes. Uh, I'm going to break out the coffee filters, and then we're going to use the scientific filters, graduated cylinders, mortar and pestles. But we've got a couple pieces of equipment that are new to you. The first one is called a boiling chip. And a boiling chip is a very, very fancy piece of calcium carbonate that looks like this. And if you say to me, Miss Kirsch, that looks like a rock, <laughs> it is. It's a piece of calcium carbonate that won't dissolve in water because calcium carbonate is insoluble. It's a rock. And what you do is you actually throw these into a beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask when you need to boil something. Water can become overheated if the water vapor molecules don't have a surface in which to form on. So what you do is you throw the boiling chip in and the water vapor or other vapors can collect on the boiling chips and it can boil without spontaneously foaming up and over. I had a friend who actually overheated a cup of tea in the microwave. What she did was she put the tea, the water in the microwave in the mug and it got so hot but there was no surface for the vapor molecules to form on and when she went in and grabbed the cup the vibration caused the thing to overheat and spontaneously burst up and she actually got burnt. So what you should do is you should put the tea bag inside the tea before you put it in the microwave because that tea bag for, allow surfaces for the water vapor bubbles to form on and then you don't get that super overheated and the chance of it blowing up crazy. The second thing that we're going to use is we're going to use something called a separatory funnel. This is a separatory funnel. So what you have is you have the bulb of the separatory funnel. It's got a little lid and it's equipped with a stopcock so we can turn it off. Now what you do is you put two liquids that are immiscible together. So I can have water and I can have an organic solvent and the organic solvent is most likely less dense so it will remain on top and if you hold on to it you can tip it back and forth and mix it and then set it up and the layers will reform and then when you open it up the denser liquid can be drained out and then you can close it and separate liquids by density. You can't do it if two liquids are soluble with each other. If I try and take water and vinegar, the vinegar will dissolve in the water so it won't form the layers so I can't separate it. It has to be two things that are immiscible. So some of the chemicals that we're going to use, we're going to use acetone, fingernail polish remover, uh, uh, normal propanol, sodium carbonate, calcium hydroxide, uh, sodium chloride, and then we're going to use a variety of different sources of caffeine. Each person is going to have their own individual source and at the end we're going to see who can isolate the most caffeine and from what source. So we're going to have my coffee, regular tea, cola, and I've also got the caffeine pills that you can buy right over the counter at uh, a grocery store and then I also bought one of these, which should also look very familiar to you because I see you guys drinking this stuff all the time. So we're actually going to isolate the caffeine from this uh, energy drink. Energy. Mm. Okay, what I want you to do is I don't want you to worry about writing that humongous procedure. I am going to give you a completely redacted, rewritten procedure. You will only have to write the procedure that pertains to you. So if you have coffee, you only have to do the coffee procedure. 
If you have the energy drink, then you only have to do use the energy drink. And I will be checking to make sure the directions that you have match your caffeine source. Okay, that's basically it. But while I have my little energy drink with me, um, one of the things that you guys should look at is in the list for this particular beverage, they also add an essential amino acid to this called taurine. And an essential amino acid is one that our bodies can produce. Uh, but infants surprisingly cannot produce taurine. And it's found in breast milk. It's also found in meats and fish. And if you, baby formula has taurine added to it uh, as a supplement for infants. Um, the combination of taurine and caffeine in here is supposed to make you feel good and you and euphoric that's the taurine part but it's also supposed to give you tons of energy now the problem with these compounds is they are diuretic so they make you lose energy and people kids believe that if you drink these things you're supposed to hydrate yourself if you have energy drinks and there are other energy drinks that you're supposed to drink before exercise or after exercise because you increase your hydration these things don't do that they actually remove the water from your body so if you drink them before exercise or after exercise yes you are getting caffeine but you are also causing your body to remove more water plus with the exercise you lose more water so you actually become more dehydrated these energy drinks should also never be mixed with alcohol. Now, I know you're not old enough, but in the future, five, 10 years, don't mix alcohol with these. The caffeine in here is a stimulant and alcohol is a depressant. And mixing the two can cause heart arrhythmias and other heart problems. And they, it can be kind of bad. So even though they sell these things, you really should pay attention to what you are drinking and the effects that you can have from that. Okay, that is my pre-lab lecture. I think you're going to like this lab. When we get done, we are actually going to separate a white crystal of the caffeine from all different sources.